in Daniel chapter 12, verses 1 to 12. The timing of this book is 534 BC. And at that time, Shalomikael stand up and great prince which stand for the children of the people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the ones and seal the book, even to the time of the hand. Many shall run to and fro, and the knowledge shall be increased. Up to verse 4, we see here now uh, the prophecy of Daniel as the response came from this angel by the name Michael, who is mentioned here to be the one who protects Israel. Uh, to us, Jesus Christ is the one who is our patron, he is our protector. And during the persecution, he is the one who will be on our side. Michael shall stand up, verse 1 tells us, the angel, the angel who and and communicated to Daniel in, in the previous chapters, like in Daniel chapter 10, he appeared to strengthen him. All along, he was the one whom God was sending to fight for his people. So we see the deliverance of the Jews from the power of the enemy. So God used to send his angel to fight for his people, Israel. And Israel is an example of how God deal with the church. It is a picture of how God will deal with the whole world. So Christ, that is our great prince, for he is the prince actually of, of, of princes, he is the king of kings, even as we see in the book of Revelation, where Christ appeared to John, and he said that from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, and to him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. So us, that is Revelation chapter 1 verse 5, Christ is our prince. He is the one who loved us and he has cleansed our sin by his own blood. He has made us kings, Revelation 1, 6, 1 verse 6, he has made us kings and a priest and to God and his father. So to him be the glory, dominion, forever and ever. Amen. So at the end of times, Christ will be there to protect us and to fight for us. He will be our judge. Those who are in him will not face judgment. That is why Christ said that uh, whoever believes in me has already crossed from death into life and will not face judgment. Why? Because the Father judges no one. He has entrusted all judgment into the Son. That is what we read in the book of John, chapter 5, that the Father judges no one, but he has entrusted all judgment to the Son. So Christ has become the source of salvation for, for the church today, for those who believe in him. We see now this angel here, Michael, Michael is the one in charge of wars, came and uh, informed Daniel that at the, at the end of days, you will stand before his people. And he was a picture of Christ. After Antiochus, who was a type of Antichrist, and he tortured uh, God's people, Christ came. And Christ was born as Jesus, as Savior. And at the end of the day, also when the Antichrist will appear, Christ will come and destroy him. So Christ is the source of, of redemption. He actually is our redeemer. So when Christ appears, we will recompense all the suffering, all the troubles of his people. Actually, in the book of Deuteronomy, we read that there will be no cry there. There will be no mourning. 
there will be no betrayal when Christ returns the second times as a judge. There shall be a time of trouble, of course, before then, returning to all, ruining, especially to God's en to, to, to enemies of God. So that trouble will be upon them, upon all the nation. And, and in particular, there will then the destruction of Jerusalem, which took place after Christ and ascended. So the angel had spoken much of this in the book of Daniel, chapter 9. To those who are new, they can check in Daniel chapter 9. The study has been there into details. So it happened about the same time that Christ set up the gospel kingdom in the world. That Michael, our prince, stand up to the judgment of the great day. That day, that shall burn as an oven. So a day is coming. Actually, the book of Malak read that a day is coming when the weekend will burn. The proud, those who ignore God, the wicked, those who not, those who have not humbled themselves to uh, to trust in the Savior, who was sent, who took away our place. That day is coming for them. So this Michael, the prince, stood against the evils of the Jews, and actually the enemy has been having an agenda to destroy the Jews. But God has preserved them over the centuries and over the years. Even the church of Christ, the enemy always fight it over the years. But God has a way of preserving it. And we are super conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Those who are in Christ Jesus, they are more than conquerors through him who loved him. And gave, I mean, who loved the church and gave himself for us. He will work a salvation for his people. At that time, your people shall be delivered, delivered from the mischief and the ruin designed to them by Antiochus. So we have found out in Daniel chapter 8, chapter 7, and chapter 10, and 11 about this evil king who rose from the kingdom of Greece. And he was a weekend king by the name of Antiochus who persecuted the Jews and his agenda was to clear them. But somehow God preserved some of them. They were remnant. And we have found that this Antiochus was a, a prototype or a typology of the person who will come at the end of, of times, who will come and oppose all that God likes, commonly referred to as Antichrist. Well, so when Christ comes into the world the second time, you will even save his spiritual Israel from sin and error. That is his second coming. Even today, there are some Jews, people who have not believed in him. But at the end of the times, they will believe in him and they will be saved. Because it is a promise he has given to them. And God can never lie. God always keeps his promise. We see here also, there shall be undistinguishing the resurrection of those that sleep in the dust. When God works in deliverance for his people from persecution, it is a kind of resurrection than Jews. Like when he released them out of Babylon through Cyrus, when he ascended to power, it was a kind of resurrection. Because at that time they had no hope. Also, as we find in the book of prophet Ezekiel 37, where he is told to prophesy to them. Because the relationship between God and Israel was dead. Actually, Israel were compared to as dry bones. So when they were restored to God, it was a kind of resurrection. Also, the deliverance which God gave to them at that time from Antiochus and they restored them, it was an outward restoration and prosperity from death to life. And But of course, you know there is the final one, whereby all those who have fallen as, asleep at the end of the day, they are going to rise. Actually, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 20, that those, the end itself will give up those who are, are in it, the seas, the land, and everybody. And then we are, all of us will face the judgment. So it is comforting to us to know that there is the day awaiting for us, the day of prosperity, the day of peace, the eternity. And this eternity, of course, we know when we believe in Christ, it begins at that very time.
at the end of times, uh, then Jews who have not believed, who have continued to deny Christ as their savior, uh, they are going to acknowledge him. So they are, so at the end of the day, Jews will be saved because they will ac accept Christ. It, so this could also be mean the general resurrection at the last day. The multitude who have fallen as, asleep in the dust will resurrect in the last day. The Jews themselves will understand also Christ and come to him and be saved from internal damnation or separation from God. Also, Antiochus, when he was persecuting them, he thought that he would clear them, but God preserved some of them. We are also learning here that uh, there shall be a glorious reward confirmed on those who, in the day of trouble and in distress, being themselves wise, didn't instruct many. We read that in the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 33, which says that, And they that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword. So, I mean, this is the crisis. God raises remnant who stand for the truth and who teach others wisdom, wisdom of, of Christ. Christ is the wisdom. Even in our generation, church has a tendency of driving most when it faces crisis. Because that is when God shows himself strong. When we are weak, he shows himself strong. So there is a glory reserved for all the saints in the future state. For all that are wise. Wise for their source and eternity. And the wisdom here, it is wisdom to turn sinners from their sin to Christ. To point sinners to Christ. To make them know that Christ is the answer. Christ is the solution. Christ is the way. Christ is the life. Christ is the resurrection. Christ is the brand of life. Christ is the light. He is the one who quenches all our thirst. That is wisdom. So when we are turning people to from darkness, we are bringing them to light. That is wisdom. And through that now, we shine. We shine and we, we, we show the wisdom of God. Ministers of Christ who have obtained mercy of him to be faithful and successful. So those who have received Christ, we need to be faithful. Faithful in doing the work. The work of showing others the way so that they can come to this great love which we have received. We are also learning in verse 4 that this prophecy of, of those times was told, Daniel was told to seal it up. Why? Because whatever it was at that time, it was for future, for years to come. So it was comforting that the Jewish nation, though in the infancy of their return from Babylon, whether they were few and weak, Actually, there were no challenges. We found out that during the reign of Cyrus, who was the king of Persia, he helped even them to rebuild Jerusalem. At that, they were at peace. So these troubles came to them, which are prophesied here in the book of Daniel, after they were established and after they were at peace. So now that is when Daniel was told to zero the book, because at that time, with the, actually, they would not even understand. It would not even make sense to them. But the appointed time, uh, the Bible says that men would run to and fro and the knowledge would increase. Actually, when they would read now this writing, this prophecy, they would discover that uh, this was already prophesied. And they would know, they would have understanding, they would have information of what God and in store for them. So that is when Daniel tells them. I mean, that is where the angel told Daniel when he continued to inquire when these things will take place to seal the prophecy, the writing, because they are for appointed time. So knowledge is key. The knowledge of the truth is key, actually, because in the book of Hosea, we find that the people of God were perishing because of that lack of knowledge. So that so those that would have their knowledge increased must take pains, must not sit still in in, in their comfort, but you are supposed to make others understand the knowledge. That is why now, whenever we meet with the Christ, whenever you receive Christ, you, you should not keep it to yourself. You should share to others so that they get that knowledge of the truth, knowledge that gives freedom, knowledge that sets you free from the bondage. So those things of God, which are now dark and obscure, will 
thereafter be made clear and easy to be understood. I remember Christ taught and said that the things which we whisper, a time will come when they will be spoken, when people are at the house top of the house, meaning that when they will be spoken openly, so there is nothing which will remain hidden forever. We should also expound the scripture to people so that they may understand the ways of the Lord. So those things of God which are undespised and neglected and thrown by, by us useless, they shall be brought into reputation. They shall be found to be of great service and be brought into request for divine revelation. Actually, there is no wonder of God which will remain, which will remain unfulfilled. We look at the, the next verses, uh, verses 5. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on, on this side of the back of the river, and the other on that side of the back of the river. And the one sent to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river. How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I earned the man clothed in, clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and he swore by, by him that liveth forever, and he swore by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times and a half, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I earned, but I understood not. Then he said, Oh, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, and he said Go your way, Daniel, for the ones that are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and trying, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that wait and cometh to the thousand three and five and that days. But go your way till the end be, for you shall rest and start in, in, in that lot at the end of the days. So you see now on Daniel, and been meant to foresee the amazing revolution of the kings. Actually, then Daniel has witnessed two. He has witnessed the kingdom of Babylon. He has also served in that kingdom. He also served in the second kingdom of Persia and Mende, where he served as a, a chief minister. And through the prophecies, the angel and also Jesus Christ himself has made him understand that there will be other changes, other, other, other revolution. There will be the kingdom of Greece, the kingdom of Romans, and there will be also an everlasting kingdom which will be established through Christ Jesus. So having seen all that through the prophecy and also the troubles which would come to, to his people, now here he is told to take rest because these things will take a uh, will be fulfilled in the future. He is told to, to go his way. So the question, when shall the end be, is asked by an angel. Actually, even angels don't know the head. Actually, even Christ himself responded when people wanted to know the end of times. And even as we study this prophecy, that is why I said earlier that uh, we should be very careful in telling the scripture what it is going to say, instead of us learning from the scriptures. Because, especially from the book of Daniel, there has been so many false teachers of the word of God who have lied to people, many generations and many centuries, who have made many people to sell everything in the name of predicting the exact end of time, rather than pointing the people to, to Christ which is the ultimate of all these prophecies. So the question, when shall the end be, is asked by the angel, as you see in the book of Daniel 
chapter 12 verse 5 and 6 concerning this we can we can learn the following who who it, who it was that asked the question daniel and the vision of christ in his glory the man clothed in in, in linen it is christ in his glory but this discourse and being with the angel gabriel and now he looks and behold other two so daniel saw other two angels two angels that he had not seen before. One upon the back of the river on one side and the other on the other side. That the river being between them. So the, Daniel saw two angels and the young stood one on the left of the river and one on the right side of the river. So the river was in between them. And these two angels, they are the ones who are whispering to one another, asking, I believe Christ stood there on the waters of the river, and they were asking him between the banks of Ulai. It was therefore proper that the angels is the attendant. Actually, Christ is attended by the angels. You can read the book of Revelation. You see there are thousands and ten of thousands of angels are and daily all the time to eternity. They are daily bowing and saying, Ole, Ole, Ole is the one who was slain. You are Ole. That is the ministry. Of the angels, they, may, they they attend to Christ, they glorify Him because Christ is Lord. It is God incarnate. Yeah. So, angels are attendant to Christ. They stood on either bank that they might be ready to go on one way and the other, and the other way. We found out in our studies that angels are a ministering spirit, and they are ready. They are meek. They are ready to obey the assignment they are given. So they were there ready to, to respond to any assignment which they would be given. To undraw the vision and to make it more illustrious and to add to the glory of the Son of Man. Actually, the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, describes very clearly that again, when he brings in the firstborn into the world, he says, and let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirit? And his ministers are flame of fire. So angels minister before Christ. And of course, they are also sent to minister to us. They are messengers. God sent them as messengers. Even now, wherever you are, the angels are surrounding you. You may not see them with the physical eyes. As a, as a, a son of God, wherever you are, we thank God for angels. They are there ministering to us. So Daniel had not seen them before. Though it is probable that they were there, but now when they began to speak, he looked up and he saw them. So the further we look into the things of God, the more we converse with them, the more we shall see of those things, the more discoveries we are going to make and to understand. Actually, the things which God has prepared for God's people, they are glorious. Nobody who has ever seen them. That's why God tells us not to envy. I believe one of the reasons why God tells us not to envy our neighbors is that uh, when we compare ourselves with what the other people have, we limit ourselves. Because what God intends for his people, it is more precious, more glorious than what any eye has ever seen or a mind conceived. To confirm, the reason why those angels were there is to confirm the discoveries that out of the mouth of the two or of three witnesses, the word might be established. Actually, these angels appear to Abraham also. The three angels appear to Abraham when we study the book of Genesis to inform themselves to hear and ask questions for the mysteries of God's kingdom are the things which are the angels desire to look into. Actually, even angels, especially on the mystery, on the hidden secrets of God saving humankind, even the angels themselves have no full understanding of how God deals with us. Actually, in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 12 says, And to whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did, they, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Spirit, sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look unto. So the things of salvation of humankind, even the angels themselves don't understand. 
because they are from God himself. Ephesians 3 10 says, To the intent that now and to the principalities and the powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Manifold here means the diverse, the divergent wisdom of God. So God's plan to us, even the angels themselves don't know, they don't understand. That tells you that even you as a person, you should not fear. Because what God has for your life, it is only Him who knows. And the, through the Spirit of God, which He has given you and He reveals to you. So the two angels said, when shall the end be? Meaning that they didn't know. So they asked one and another. But Daniel and, you, and you only one. So to whom, who is being asked this question? So we have seen the person who is asking this question. It is the angels who are asking one another. We have answered this question. The question we have answered is, who it was asked? Who was asking the question? The question was asked by the angels. And we want now to answer this other question. Who are they asking? To whom this question was put? put to the man clothed in linen, of whom we read in, in the book of Daniel chapter 10, verse 5. Actually, this man dressed in linen, it is Christ, our great high priest, who was upon the waters of the river, and who spoke a person or interpreted the angel Gabriel, and all this were on being. This river was ended, ended the care. Then not chapter 10, verse 4, we are told. The same with Tigris, the place where many of the events of prophecies took place. Even in the book of, of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 14, that river. Is, is recorded there, the paradise, where God used to commune with the first man before he was separated from God by sin. Water signify people. Actually, in the prophecies, water signify people. And so, he's standing upon the waters, it, it, it was to, to denote his dominion over all the people of the world and over everything of the world which exists. So Christ is the master of all. Actually, even during the time of Christ here, we see him walking in on, on water. Christ walked on water in the book of Matthew chapter 4, 14, verse 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on, on sea. So all things were created by Christ through him and for him. So he has a control of all of them. He appears even in, in water. So what, what the question was, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? So that was the question. How long? So the angels asked the question. They were asking Christ. But, but remember all this is prophecy. And the question was, how long will all these wonders be? So Daniel would not ask the question because he would not pray into what was hidden, nor seen inquisitive concerning the times and the seasons which the father has put in his own power but that he might have the satisfaction of the answer the angel put the question in his hearing our lord jesus christ sometimes answered the questions which his disciples were afraid or assumed to ask actually there is a time when christ could know what his disciples were being traveled about and they would even respond to them even without them asking. For example, John chapter 16, verse 19, he says, Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and he said unto them, Do, do of you inquire among yourself of that I said, a little aware, and all of you shall not see me, and again a little aware, all of you shall, all of you shall see me. So we see there in that incident, this, these disciples they were curious, they were disturbed, they were confused, but they were fearing to ask Christ, and we see him uh, coming to their rescue and answering. So even in this case, Daniel had so many questions, although he didn't have the courage to ask, but God decided to respond to him. The angel asked as one concern, how long shall it be? What is the time prefixed in the divine councils for the end of these wonders? This suffering, trying times, that are to pass over the peoples of God. So, in the troubles of our life as the Church of Christ, 
The angels wonder. They are astonished that God will suffer his church to be afflicted. And they, actually they are anxious to know what good will will come to us in our affliction. So we thank God for the ministry of, of angels. So good angels know no more of things to come than, than God is pleased to discover to them. Actually, angels don't know everything concerning our life. They are limited. That is what we are learning. Yeah, they are limited. They don't know everything. They only know to the extent as to which uh, God revealed to them. That is good angels. What about the evil angels? Because there are two categories. Meaning that evil angels know less. That's why we should not fear the evil. That is why we should not fear the powers of darkness. Because they are limited they are about our life. The only angels in heaven are concerned for the church on earth. And the church it is you and me. So they, they, they feel with us. They are concerned about our peace. So you see the answer. What the answer was returned to it by him who is indeed the number of secret. Actually, Christ knows your secret. In Christ, actually, as we read even in the book of Colossians, everything is naked before Christ. All things are naked before Christ. Darkness in him is like light. So, here, he gave, he gave the answer. Yeah, actually, the answer is general. It is not specific. The answer which was given, it is general, verse 7. That they shall continue for a time, times and a half. That is here. Time in the Bible, time represents one year. Times, two years. A half, a half, one year. So in this case, it is three, year, three years and a half. Time, one year. Times, two years. A half, a half, one year. That is three years and a half. It is given here. As we read in the book of Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. So, but the one half of prophetic a week. So here, different scholars, they have got different interpretation. They don't have specific uh, interpretation here. It is not clear on how long this would take time. So others say it is 1,260 days. Others refer to that, but as we find, it is not clear, although the book of Revelation gives us much information. So this mighty one, that Daniel also stood with both feet on the water, and he saw with both hands lifted up, so an oath is of use. Actually, there is a mighty Daniel also here. So he, was, he came to confirm what was going on here. So God will suffer him to prevail till the till he shall have accomplished all that God had determined to accomplish. That is now the Antiochus, whom we have studied in, 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 in Book of Daniel chapter 11. He came and he ruled for many years. For many years. Over that years, torturing the torturing the Jews until God made this family of Maccabees rise who cleansed the, the temple, who are the picture of Christ, who was to come and restore dignity in humanity. Here is something, and then more particularly concerning the time of the continuance of those troubles in what is seen too in Daniel chapter 12, verse 11 and 12. Verse 11 and 12, I read, And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that make desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and nineteen days. Blessed is he that wait and comes to the thousand three to the thousand three hundred and five and that days. So you can see the extent fixed from which the time of the travel is to be dated from the taking away of the daily sacrifice by Antiochus um, and the setting up of the image of Jupiter. Actually, Antiochus, as we have found, he, he, he took away and did a sacrifice, and he put his image on the altar of God by the name of Jupiter. So from that time, they must reckon their troubles to begin, indeed, when they were, de that is the Jews, deprived of the benefit of public ordinances. But we found out that it is them who are dis disobeying God by 
by polluting the worship of God. So God allowed them to be to go through the suffering. That is 1,290 days, which is equivalent to three years and the seven months up to the time when that temple was restored by this group which rose to which rose and fought for their maker. We find also the completing of the deliverance, or at least further advanced to answer it, which is here set for the five days after the former, and the something point to the death of Antiochus. That is 1,335 days after is profaning the temple. So blessed is he that wait and come to that time. That is recorded in the book of Maccabees. So for more details on this, you can read on the history books on Maccabees. There is a good history record on what happened. So Roma, so later on we know that Romans came and they took over from from the Greeks. And when they took over now, the rule the rulership of Greeks ended. So the question, what shall the end be? Is asked by Daniel, and the answer is given is given. Here we can observe that why Daniel asked this question, it was because Though he had earned what was sent to the angel, yet he did not understand it. So Daniel was a very intelligent man and had been conversant in vision and prophecies. Yet here he was puzzled. He did not understand the meaning of the times, of the time, times and the party of our time, at least not so clearly and with so much sanctity as he wished. So the best men are often much at a loss in their inquiries concerning divine things and meet with that which they do not understand. But the better they are, the more sensible they are of their own weaknesses and ignorance, and the more ready to acknowledge them. And that is why the Bible also tells us that cast is a man who trusts in another man. So any man whom you think is very wise, even in the things of God, that person is as wise as God desires to review to him. So, if you have a question, the best person to ask is your creator. That's why also in this learning, in this channel, we have found out that if you want to know the purpose of our being, don't ask the creation, ask the creator. So even Daniel here, he was limited. Although God had reviewed much with him. What was the question? What the question was, oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? That was the question. He indirect his inquiry, not to the angel that talked with him. Now here it is Daniel, but immediately to Christ, for to whom else should we go with our inquiry? So today, in our society, we are learning that uh, we have so many questions, we have so many things which we don't understand, but if you take them to God through Christ in prayer, you will be you will find solace. You will find comfort. He will give you comfort. Ask him and you will never be disappointed. Because he is the one who uh, knows all the secrets of our life. He knows them. So you should do it in humility. As Daddy Aroya did because he has, Oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? So, so great is the truth. And, the will, uh, and, and, and God's will will prevail. So what the answer is returned to this question, besides what, if, what is referred to, to the time? So you find here the general answer given to him. He gave him the general answer and dismissed him. So when, we, when if, that is even when we are praying, we should be open to God's will, not our will. Because in God knows the best of us. He must be contented with the discoveries that he had been made to know. Go your way, Daniel. That is the answer he was given. Go your way. Go your way, Daniel. Let it be, let it surface. Let it be admitted for the foresight of the things to come. But stop here. Go your way. Um, about the king's business. So even now, there are so many things which, which we don't understand. And God is telling us to go away, to continue with that which he has revealed to us. It is enough. Actually, the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy that the secret things belong to God, our God, but the revealed things belong to us and to our children. 
we don't have to, to tell the scripture what we think it is to say. God has already revealed to us enough that we need for life and for godliness. So I believe we are being told to go our way, to do that which God has called us to do. So communion with God is not our continual feast in this world. We, sometimes, we are sometimes taken to be witnesses of Christ's glory. And we say it is good to be here. But we must go down from the mountain. And they have there no continuing city. So those that know much know but in part. And they still see there is a great deal that they are kept in dark about. And, are, and, are, and they are likely to be so till the veil is, is taken. So the, their knowledge shall go. Go your way, Daniel, satisfied with what you have. So again, here, I emphasize that uh, nobody will know everything about the things of God, regardless of how much you think they know. That's why each and every person should have their personal relationship with God. And not everything will be revealed to us. Many things will remain not clear until when we shall be transformed, when we shall be like Christ. There are so many things which happen and sometimes we, we don't understand. We don't understand how God is operating. But at the end of the day, we are going to say for sure, all the judgment of God are true. All the judgment of God are all together true. He must not expect that what he had been said to him would be full understand until it was accomplished. The ones that are closed up, that is what he was told and sealed are involved in perplexities and they are likely to be so. Till the time of the end, till the end of these things, till the end of, of all things. So Daniel was ordered to seal the book to the time of the end. So then Jews used to say, when Elias came, he shall tell us all things. They are closed up and sealed. That is the discovery designed to be made by them. is now fully settled and completed. Nothing is to be added to it. No are taken from it. It is closed up and sealed. Ask not there after. So there is a time even when we need to be still and to know that God is God. No matter how much we question God, He still will remain God. We need to be contented in Him. Actually, that's why even the psalmist says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nation. So there is a time as believers we need to sit down. And just behold the beauty of God and know that He is God without questioning Him because He remains to be there. You must count upon no other man, no other than that. As long as the world stands, there will still be in it such mixture as now we see there is of good and bad. We long to see all, we long to see God separating the wheat and the wheat. But that time will come during the harvest. Actually, even Christ said that. We allow them to grow together until the end of this. We are told before that the weekend we don't do weekendly. We can expect no better from them, but which is worse, none of them, the weekend shall understand. So we are told the weekend we will continue being wicked, the sin will increase. They will not understand, they will continue being wicked. The blind will continue being blind on the things of God. Therefore, they are a weekend because they will not understand. If they didn't, they would turn to God and they would be healed. That is what we read. Secondly, it is part of their punishment. They will do wickedly and therefore God has given them up to blindness of mind and they are said concerning them. They shall not understand nor be converted and healed. That is even what Christ said in the book of Matthew chapter 13 verse 14. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah which says, By hearing all of you shall hear and they shall not understand, and the seeing all of you shall see, and they shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed in gross, and their ears are a dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and they should understand with their heart, and they should be converted, and I should heal them. So that is what Christ said. So even here in this prophecy, uh, it is said the same that the weekend would increase with the wickedness. Yet, burnt as the world is, God will secure to Himself a remnant of good people. Even today, they are remnant. They are you think that they are not good people. God has preserved His remnant in your generation. 
God always secures his remnant who will bring glory to him, who will stand for him, no matter what happens. At every generation, God has kept his remnant. He must comfort himself with the pleasing prospects of his happiness in death, in judgment and eternity. But Daniel chapter 12 verse 13, which is the last verse, says, But go you are you are away until the end, for you shall rest and stand in your lot at the end of days. So Daniel is given here the comfort. Daniel was now very old, actually, about 90 years, and had been long engaged, both in an intimate acquaintance with heaven and in a great deal of public business. Actually, Daniel served four different kings. Four different kings. From the time he was a teenager, from the time he was about 20 years, how to know he is about 90. So he had delivered a lot. He had seen very challenging visions. So Daniel was familiar with the ordinary life and also he was familiar with the eternity through these visions. So the angel here gives him comfort. He tells him that you will rest. There is nothing as that as consoling as you knowing your end, the end of your life, and how you will live forever. It is good for us all to think much of going away from this world. We are still on going, and it must be gone shortly. Gone the way of all the earth. That must be our way, but this is our comfort. We shall not go till God calls us home. And he caused us to be with him forever. Just as Daniel, you are, you are, you are told, go your way. You have finished your testimony. You have finished your work. You have accomplished your mission. So it was very comforting. So when a good man goes his way from this world, he enters into rest. Actually, if you are connected to Christ, when you leave this world, you have rested forever. Never again to see evil. Never again to to struggle with the body because you have been rested from the torment of the body. So time and the days will have an end. Not only our time and the days will end very shortly, but all times and the days will have an end at length. Actually, the world will end. There, there will be an end according to the scriptures we are learning. It is important now for us to maximize the time God has given us. It is a gift to have time. It is a gift to be alive. It is a privilege to be alive. So we should maximize the time God has given us to fulfill the purpose as to why he has called us here on earth. Our rest in the grave will be but till the end of the days. And then the peace rest will be happily disturbed by a joyful resurrection. Actually, we, we know those who die in Christ, they will resurrect. That is what will happen. Those who are asleep, they will resurrect. We are also finding that we must, every one of us, stand in our lot at the end of the days. In the judgment seat of the great day, we must have our, uh, we must be ready for the judgment day. Come, you blessed God. Actually, we should say, Come, you Christ. Come, you blessed God. It is comforting, not only to Daniel, but to all believers. Whatever our work has been here on earth, happy days are coming when we will rest with our maker. And if we are in Christ, there is no judgment because he is the judge and he is our elder brother. You will welcome us with hope, with happiness. And finally, hope and the prospect of one blessed uh, glory is awaiting us at the end of the days. We will be an effectual support to us when we are going our way out of this world and we will finish us with living comfort in dying moment. So we thank God for the book of Daniel. It, is, it has added in a glorious way. My prayer is that you shall be prepared for the end of days, which is coming soon. And this soon, it is only Christ who knows. It is only God the Father who knows. You, What is important in the book of Daniel, it is you and me to connect to Christ and to remain in him. God give you grace to remain in him and to connect to Christ Jesus who is the Savior.